So everyone has seen something about God. Everyone knows that there's a God, but they have suppressed that truth. God is very fair. He doesn't judge people who have never had a chance to hear, but he tells us that everyone has had a chance to see God through the world that he has made. This is called natural revelation. And whether you're looking at a newborn baby or whether you're looking at a galaxy, God has revealed himself through this world. He discloses something of his existence, not everything, not very much actually, but he has disclosed that he is in this world, that he is here, his divine powers are here, he's working and it's clearly seen unless we suppress that truth. So he says, men are without excuse. He is telling us that he is not being unfair. He is being very fair. Everybody knows something about God, and they will be judged on what they know. But then he goes on to say something that's rather ominous. Rather than being, uh, bringing people into a relationship with God, this actually brings wrath down on people. And that is an ominous statement. Because what the natural revelation does is to condemn people. They know the truth and they have suppressed it and God's wrath is revealed. It takes the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring them into relationship with him. Natural revelation by itself can't do it. Then the next section is going to tell us why this is so and how it happened, but we won't get into that today. Um, so how do we make sense of these uh, three verses that we are looking at? One of the things that we have to figure out is how our understanding of God's wrath has been conditioned by the world around us. And it definitely has. This is a picture of C.H. Dodd. Uh, Charles Dodd, you can tell, lived a number of years ago, uh, was a great biblical scholar, loved the Lord. But he was also a classical scholar, and he read all the Greek literature that he could find, everything that he could find about the Greeks. And he read their mythology, he read uh, their literature, he read everything that he could find. I mean, it's a brilliant guy, brilliant guy. But in reading all of this, he, he came to the idea that God's wrath was, was emotional and capricious because you know, Apollo acted that way, Zeus acted that way. All of the Greek gods, you know, acted just on a whim. You know, uh, they would walk into town and, and uh, you know, they would be refused hospitality in their town for some reason, and the whole town would get wiped out for nothing, just because the god was offended, because he got his nose bent out of shape. And so Dodd was conditioned by all of that. And he came to the idea that, um, uh, what do I have up there? Um, you know, the, the, in, in Greek mythology, the, the gods aren't out to establish justice. They're just out to offend their wounded pride. Well, Dodd had a hard time believing in a, in a god that would do that. And so he came to believe that, um, or he came to teach that, that wrath was just the inevitable process of cause and effect. And it really wasn't God doing this. It wasn't, it wasn't this, this offense, you know, this offended little brat that has all these amazing powers that just gets, you know, ticked off at the world. He just thought it was cause and effect, one domino falling after another. Now, that in, is true in part because oftentimes God just allows the consequences of your behavior to come upon you. Not always, and I don't think in total, but God often just lets the consequences go. Uh, and so people who commit crimes sometimes end up in prison. Uh, you know, people who are lazy on the job get fired. You know, the consequences just follow. But Dodd believed that that was all that there was to it. But this isn't what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches a very personal God. And unrighteousness and wrath are part of his person. Um... And so we can't just say they're cause and effect. We are offending a holy God. He's not capricious. He's not unfair. He does not, doesn't get his nose bent out of shape. But he is uh, angry against sin. The Bible writers often use analogies to try and talk about God. They talk about God having 
of you know, ears, and they talk about God having hands, and they talk about God walking and speaking. God is a spirit, okay? The part that, of us that resembles God is spirit. And, but we have to use our words to try to figure out how to talk about God. And so the Bible writers talk about his emotions as well. You know, he chastises, he, ten, he, he tests, he repents, he rejoices, and he grows angry. But God's anger is not like our anger. Our anger is a little kid's anger. God's anger well, is always tempered by his love, always tempered by a complete understanding of the situation. But it is still anger against sin. It is just, it is fair, but it is still anger. It's never egotistical. He just doesn't do this because we've ignored him, okay? It's not capricious. He doesn't get angry at us. Just, you know, some days he does and some days he doesn't. He is angry against sin. Now, he is very patient, and that may make him look capricious. Uh, it may look like he doesn't care about sin, but he is very patient. But one day, and the Bible writers tell us, he will come again and make everything right. Another cultural condition that we have to consider about is the materialism that goes on in this world that says there's nothing in this world, um, uh, there's nothing outside of this universe. It's only God. It's only, no, it's not only God. It's only matter. It's only this universe. And that's all that there is. And so it's all cause and effect. And so there is really no punishment for sin. Uh, it's just cause and effect. That's different from, from Dodd's because Dodd believed that, that there was a God that set this all in motion. But this world has tried to tell us this. I, I think what's worse, though, is a, a view of God as a purely benign being. All that God wants to, to, to do for us is to help us out. All God is interested in is, is being your friend. And, and coming alongside of you and helping you in your projects and helping you in your life and being your buddy and, and, and just helping you and, and put all the warm fuzzies in the world. He's a big help button. You know, God would never be angry at us. God would never inconvenience us. And I think a lot of times when we think about God's wrath, we, we tend to push it aside because God would never do that. But God is a holy God and a just God. And if, if there is sin in this world, if there is wrong in this world, a holy, righteous God must do something about it. It is necessary to do something about that. And he does. And the wrath of God is revealed. The view that, that God is this, is this help button is far away from the worldview of the Bible. And we have to adjust our worldview to accommodate to, not to accommodate, but to align ourselves with the worldview of the Bible. Now, I'm not saying have the worldview of the Greek ancient Near East, okay? <laughs> they had a lot of things screwed up. But we have to align our view with what God teaches us. And we have to understand that God must react negatively to sin. Believers seeking to understand Paul uh, have to understand that worldview. So we have to understand that God is wrathful. But we all, another thing that this passage teaches us about is natural revelation. This is, may not be a, a new, must, might be a new word for you. Um, but natural revelation is all that God teaches us through this world, outside of the Bible. And there is a lot of things uh, that God teaches us. Now, the Bible has a number of verses on this. Some of them seem to be moving in opposite directions. Um, but this one uh, teaches us some things that, that we can learn. Uh, and the way the world is moving, because the world has accepted a lot of different religions now, we have to move this uh, up to the top of our list, and we have to understand what natural revelation is. The first thing we need to understand is that there is natural revelation. God has revealed himself in this world. It's not just through the Bible. It's not just through Jesus Christ. God has revealed himself in this world, it exists. Uh, it says in verse 20, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. That's a very good definition of natural revelation. Not only has God left it um, clear evidence of himself, 
But this evidence has been seen. He makes it clear that we have seen